My grandmom sadly passed away, while my brother came out safely with a few burns. Redditors from Lebanon or Beirut, how are you after the horrific explosion in the city? What's up my viewer, hope you're having a chill ass day, going through some stories. I'm glad you decided to join your boy Andrew for another story time. Since you're already here, can hit that like button and subscribe? If you don't I'll tell your parents that you vape. Anyway let's start these stories. Let me tell you that I could still feel the burden of the shockwave for more than 15 minutes afterward. After 12 hours my ear still hurts a little, I'm getting myself checked today, the shockwave was really intense, thank god my lazy ass didn't go for a walk. My apartment is 2 kilometers away from Beirut port. I'm fine. Just lots of broken windows. No one was injured near me. Mom was shocked. I don't know what will happen next. 2019 we lost all our money. 2020 COVID-19, daily 20 hours power cuts. Shocked, heartbroken, and hopeless. Ears still ringing from the blast. Friends and family injured. I don't know how Lebanon is going to cope with this trauma and move on. The whole explosion was like an out-of-body experience that keeps playing over and over in my head. Well in my case I'm fine, I took all the earthquake procedures my family practices once a month in case of an earthquake, then left the building as soon as the shaking stopped. Then came the horrifying part the smoke, and then boom the shockwave, I was deafened for about 30 seconds, and got a few minor scratches on my arm, but other than that I'm fine, can't speak for at least 4.5k others though sadly. My brother felt the shockwave 12 to 14 miles east a lot later than I did, I was about 2 miles south, but I managed to reach home without major injuries. I wasn't scared from a trembling building and shattered windows, not because I'm so great, but I did not process what happened, saw the mushroom cloud, and genuinely thought we got nuked. I didn't understand the blast and what I went through before I saw all the videos online. I got extremely lucky. I'm Lebanese and I'm stuck abroad because of COVID. I was on the phone with my grandmother when it happened. You do not want to hear your grandmother yelling like she is about to die. Everyone I know and I spent hours making phone calls, texting people are you alive? Worrying when the other person took more than a split second to answer. We had ceiling to floor windows in my house, they're completely destroyed. Mom had to stay home alone all night and we were worried someone would try to break in, because we live on the second floor. We were also worried about the fumes. This is something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Lived a kilometer away from the explosion, I left Lebanon two weeks ago to visit family. My house is completely destroyed and unlivable. My two closest friends were my roommates, one was in the bathroom when it happened, the other was outside walking back from work. They were sending me voice notes of what was going on while it happened, these two men are the strongest people I know, and getting messages from both of telling me to tell their families they love them in case anything happens, shakes you. If they were in their rooms I can't begin to imagine what would have happened to them. They're both safe now in the mountains, thankfully no one I know is dead just lots of injuries. I live just two miles away from where the explosion occurred. We live on the 10th floor of a high-rise building. My siblings and I were sitting on the balcony before the impact. I remember clearly feeling the earth shake and us calling out that there was an earthquake. We rushed into our living room only to hear the loudest bang I've ever experienced. My mother, who had seen the entire thing happen from the kitchen window, was hysterical. The moments after the deafening bang were followed by a gust of wind that shook all our windows, slammed all our doors, and shattered our neighboring building's windows. My family was freaking out and unsure of what had just happened. The idea that this was the first act of war was on everyone's minds. My younger sibling experienced a panic attack and my mother was inconsolable. I clearly remember feeling nothing, my emotions were empty, but I felt my knees shaking. I was so focused on making sure my family was okay that I didn't give myself time to process. It wasn't until after I had gone to bed till I realized how bad it was for me too. I had a nightmare about it that woke me up at 4 am, and any creak or thump in the night had me flinching. My family and I are physically safe, which is why we're making a trip to donate blood for those who weren't so lucky. There is only one main road standing between my house and the port. 
Thankfully, I left the apartment 10 minutes before to meet a friend, saw the fire, and thought it was something casual. Walked one street away, so one more layer of building away from the port, and sat and ordered some food outdoors. A few minutes later, we hear very loud rumbling, stand up to see what's happening from a better angle, and boom. The scariest moment in my life was seeing the blast come my way and not knowing what will happen next. My first impulse was to run away from buildings, my friend's impulse was to run into them to hide, so we ran in opposite directions. And then, glass and pebbles fell on me, and everything was covered in dust. I got minor wounds and went with my friend to check on her boyfriend who lives nearby. The apartment was full of blood and we couldn't find him. Even in those moments I looked at her and said. You just got the full Beirut experience. To which she responded. Yes, I'm definitely ready to leave. She went to the nearest hospital to see if her boyfriend was there and found out that he was transported to another hospital further from Beirut. I called my mom and the moment she responds she is crying. She lives somewhat far but was worried about me and was glad I'm alive. I went back to check on my house and the streets were like a war scene. People running everywhere and screaming, blood all over the place, rubble, and people fighting, someone parked to get someone injured, and blocked the way on another car wanting to take someone injured to the hospital. The stairs in my building were full of blood stains and screams. Doors on all floors are out of place. Reached the house, and it has literally imploded on itself as all the windows were closed. So, the house is gone. The building next to mine had two floors blown away onto the street, with electricity lines on the street amid the rubble. I also lost my car in the process as rubble fell on it. As I was packing the essentials to leave my house, the neighbor above me told me a lady in the building had her neck broken and needed assistance. We call for an ambulance but no response, so we call my neighbor's son-in-law. He says he's on his way. I take my stuff and leave for my parents' house. No cars anywhere near to take me. I walk for around a mile, and as I walk I see a beggar I always used to see nearby. He asks how he can reach North Lebanon where his family is, and asks for money to go there. Tells me his brother died as rubble fell on him from the building, and cries. I pass him some money, tell him we have all been horrified, and to take care. I find a taxi and go to my parents' house. They cry when they see me come in. I am still processing all what happened, and perhaps this is the reason I wrote this long comment. I can still feel the buzz in my ears, and watching the videos makes me shake on the inside. Lost everything, still processing. Still processing. We're physically fine, but we are definitely traumatized. This is unlike anything else and can hardly be described with words. The worst part was the uncertainty of what was happening. I live about 1.75 miles away from the explosion, and before the second impact the ground was violently shaking for a solid 10 seconds. Everyone felt like their buildings are falling down. And then the shockwave burst all the windows and doors open. All you could see is blood and all you can hear is screams. The scene really felt like it was from a post-apocalyptic film. Our people have been hit with so many heavy blows, we are known for being resilient, but this is too much for all of us. Just in a single year we've been through protests to overthrow the government, an economy crisis with prices of all products increasing uncontrollably, due to our currency collapsing, a full-on pandemic with minimal planning by the government. And now with this explosion of ammonium nitrate that the government knew existed and knew how dangerous it was. We all went out to donate blood not knowing we shouldn't be inhaling the orange smoke because no one in the state cared to tell us. And to top things, hospitals that were accepting COVID cases and injuries from the explosion were collapsing themselves and all the patients had to be moved to other hospitals. We lack crisis management on the state scale and it showed yesterday. We all woke up today and we're wounded. Hundreds are dead, thousands are injured, and so many properties are destroyed. With our current economy crisis, there is no funding to rebuild what's been destroyed, the port included that the country relied on for most of its imports based failure of an economy, we're facing homelessness and shortages in food and fuel. We feel helpless as darker days come. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.